Hi Capricorn, this is your horoscope for March 2017. Thanks for joining me, it's really nice to be with you today. Now, Jupiter and Pluto, they square each other all month. Jupiter is the good luck planet, it's in Libra and it's in your 10th house of career. So, the big blessing for you this month is your working life, your career, and opportunities that come via other people. So whether it's your boss recognizing that you're amazing and talented and offers you a promotion, or whether it's overhearing some sort of opportunity and seeing that you can make changes as a result to that, that's where the big luck factor lies for you this month. Now, they do square each other, Jupiter and Pluto, so they're 90 degrees apart, and a square is, it causes friction between the two planets. And Pluto is in your sign of Capricorn, in your first house of self, so there's transformation going on about the way you see yourself. In relation to work, the working side of things that are changing in your life are going to see, are going to alter the way you see yourself, but it's like chicken and the egg. You could argue that because you see yourself differently, you see yourself as more capable and valuable and uh, skilled. That's why these opportunities happen in your career and you're able to make changes that work for the that, that, that work for you. So whichever way you look at it, the big blessing for you in March is your working life and your career and you'll start to see some really good things happening in that area of your life. Now from the 20th of March until the 10th, no, from the 20th of February until the 10th of March, the Sun and Neptune have been sitting together in your third house of communication. So you may be noticing that um, emotionally it's been all over the place that um, you've things that you have ticked off and dealt with in the past have reappeared and have caused you problems. Maybe past issues, maybe disappointments, past relationships, ex-partners, addiction issues, feelings of abandonment, anything at all may have reappeared and really made the last couple of weeks rather difficult. You're an earth sign, so there's not been very much going on here which has facilitated taking practical action. It's all about, um, it's been all about and will continue to be about until the 10th of March, the feelings, the emotional side of things. And because all of that's been going on in your third house, you particularly will feel this emotional onslaught quite heavily. It's like an emotional tsunami that's been hitting you. So that gets easier from the 10th of March onwards, that kind of eases off. What also happens here during this month of March, on the 4th of March until the 14th of April, Venus, the personal planet of love and beauty, goes retrograde. So that's significant. It only happens once every year and a half. And it means that it's not a good time to um, have a wedding, to launch a new business, or to start any venture that you really love and care about. What it is good for is to let go of relationships which are really toxic and negative, which you've been stuck in and which you haven't been able to get out of before. Now, Venus goes retrograde in your fourth house of family. So, I know this is a touch, this is a maybe a little bit of a controversial subject, and it's something that really I can relate to. We all have family members that are difficult and that we don't particularly enjoy. <laughs> That's why the cliche is, you know, you don't choose your family because we all have that. But some people go the extra mile and cut off their parents or their siblings and never speak to them again. And if you look at it on the surface, that can often be very sad. But if you look at it in the sense of you've got a parent who is really abusive and really terrible, what do you choose? Do you choose your duty as a child to that pa parent and keep the relationship going and let it ruin your life? Or do you accept the guilt of cutting off that relationship and really liberate yourself and free yourself and make your life better because you don't have this terrible, toxic person bringing you down all the time? Now, everyone has to decide that for themselves. No one can decide that for you. That's something that you have to make. However, if you've been considering something like that, ending a relationship which is really harmful to you, but you haven't been able to free yourself of it, Venus retrograde supports you in cutting the ties between people like that and yourself. So give that some thought. If it is something that you've struggled with and you've wanted to undertake for a long time, Venus will support you in this month. On the 12th of March, we've got the full moon in Virgo. That's in your ninth house. So this is a really nice time for you to uh, travel, to reward yourself, to do something that is fun for yourself. It's also a good time to learn new skills, or to think about what it is you want to kind of, how you want to broaden your horizons in a sense. 
On the 21st of March until the 1st of April, Uranus and Mercury start to conjunct each other and that's in your fourth house. So watch out for aggression here, aggressive ways of communicating, the desire to burn bridges, whether it's warranted or not, like I mentioned a moment ago. By the end of the month, you will want to rampage a little bit and give people a piece of your mind. And that gets stronger and stronger and stronger as the end of the month approaches. On the 28th of March, we've got the new moon in Aries sitting in your fourth house. And it's really about what do I want when it comes to my family relationships? And what am I going to do? And how am I going to stand in my own power? And at the same time, all of that energy opposes Jupiter in your 10th. So really this month, you're going to value your own career and what you've achieved in your own life much more than what your family's done for you. So that puts another filter on it. Sharp, what, what is it? Um, sharper than a serpent's tooth is an ungrateful child, as Shakespeare used to say. So you are really in the mode of my career, my work, what I'm good at. I've got these terrible parents who've always put me down and been negative, whether that's right or not. By the end of the month, it is much more likely that you'd even see Mother Teresa as having put you down. <laughs> because you become very focused on yourself and what you've done with your life, despite all of the poor, terrible things that have happened to you. Now, I'm not trivializing that. I do realize that certain relationships must end and should end, and that it's difficult to do that. So if you're in one of those situations, Venus retrograde will help you. But what I'm also saying is that at the end of the month, your, your vision becomes colored towards seeing the negative much more than the positive. So if you do want to make that decision, do it um, beginning of March when Venus goes retrograde, but before the 21st. And then again, make decisions from the 1st of April until the 15th of April. That's a good time to make these these long-term relationships, these long-term decisions about ending relationships that do not serve you. So I hope that gives you an idea of what you'll be working with. If you would like a private reading with me um, to look at what your vocational aptitudes are or what your life purpose is, what's coming up for you this year in terms of your finance, your career, your love life, your health, family relationships, please get in touch with me for a private reading. The website is gregoryscott.com. Click on the readings tab to order your reading Please remember to subscribe to the channel and I'll speak to you next month.